contribution to the debate. I now give the floor to the Honorable Pio Tigonduandu. You have the floor. Yeah. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I, uh, I rise to uh, to make my contribution on um, the current debate before the House on the uh, the uh, um, <clears throat> the bills in questions that have already been outlined by the the, the Honorable Attorney General. But at the outset, I, first of all, Honorable Speaker, I would like to um, to support the. Um, the, the, the declarations and the statements that have been just made by the Honorable Rof Lipe Tuisawau uh, with regards to um, uh, the land at Ndanarao um, uh, in terms of the land swap that government continues to have about. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the, um, I'm not going to try to dwell into its particulars. However, it is significant to understand you know, within the context of the debate, particularly on Bill 17, is to understand how the government at the time spoke to the landowners with regards to their lands, okay, the risks that it took, and of course the benefits that it would make them. It is not essentially just about alienation as the government is happening about today as being the negativity of it. Obviously, from the goodwill of the landowners, after consulting with the government, they have benefited tremendously from that. And not only them, the Bono of Nandi, but the whole of Fiji and the tourism industry today. Now, they should be in accolades of the decisions of the government at the time because of that good decision, that was a good investment that has helped Fiji to date. So that speaker, I must add, is the benefit of consultation with landowners with regard to the benefits, not only the benefits, but how it affects them. Unbelievable. Secondly, Unbelievable. secondly uh, Honorable Speaker, I, I, I want to uh, comment on uh, some comments made earlier by uh, the Honorable Koya. Uh, okay, on his attack of the alternative view, the alternative, the alternative interpretations of Bill 17 that have been made by very, very credible lawyers and credible law firms, lawyers that are actually doing the job right now. That are going, that have, are dealing with mortgages, they are dealing with pledges, that are dealing with caveats. With regards, with regards, with regards to um, to to Itauke Land Trust Board and their processes. Now they're all saying that they are happy with it. There is absolutely no need, you know, to bring up a law that regulates this because it's already working well enough. It's just a matter of making sure that the processes are improved. Now. Honorable Speaker, I am also one of those, um, um, the uh, members of parliament that are currently being questioned by police with regards to this bill. And in particular, um, it calls into question my responsibility and my calling as a member of parliament, representing not only Tailebu or Northland for that matter, but the whole of Fiji, okay? Uh, with regards to matters of the law and lawmaking in this house. And in that respect, I have uh, put out a video which is now the subject of that investigation. Now, Honorable Speaker, let me just reiterate the position of the National Federation Party. Our objection to this bill is based on the attitude of government in the way that he has shoved this bill through the... Uh, through the uh, budget debate process without consulting with the landowners. Okay? It's not consulting the landowners, li almost little to no consultation with the landowners. That is the heart of the matter. Everyone is interpreting the benefits of, uh, you know, or the cost otherwise of the bill. Honorable Speaker, ultimately, we are a parliament. <laughs> We are debating here today, and either side of the house is saying what the bill is about. Okay, that is a respective position. We differ. We, res we differ and we respect our differences. The alternative opinion is not wrong. 
the alternative opinion is not wrong. It is to be respected. It is to be respected. And that is the argument here. And then NFP is saying the attitude in which this has been pushed through is arrogant. And then it's also disrespectful, disrespectful in the sense, because we believe that the people that needed to be consulted because this law is going to affect them have not been, you know, there's been little to no consultation with them. And that is the native landowners whose land are protected under the Native Land Trust Act of 1940. That is the gist of our, um, of our point and our argument. That's that's exactly it. So I the rights are not affected. Uh, no, no, honorable speaker, I, I I have been called in to that regard. Okay, I've been called in in that regard. However, honorable speaker, I also want to say that you know we are not living in North Korea, nor are we living in China, nor are we living in any other dictatorship. The people. You know, are uh, at the heart, uh, at the heart of our democracy. And in within the Fijian people, that at the heart of our democracy are the Itauke that has been espoused under our current constitution. Also, every other race that are in Fiji, our first and primary objective is to understand they put us in this house. And our respect is due to them. When they say something that differs from the government, the government should listen. Now I'm going to come into that on the speaker why that point is so essential. Why we should listen and not talk at the people. So in that case, because we are members of parliament, we have a role to play to make sure that the people are informed. To be informed properly. In this case where they, it is a bill for God's sake, it is a bill. It's not even law. We are talking about it, and when it becomes law, and God forbid if it's passed today, the interpretation of that law, which is now the subject of the investigation of the police, is going to be on the judge. If a landowner or a lessee is going to be wronged, believes he's been wronged under this law, he takes it to the judge, who will then see, and if it's a magistrate for that matter, make the decision on who is right in his interpretation of the law. And then the law goes to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court of Fiji. It can be three different interpretations, Honorable Speaker. Now, we are here only in the consultation stage. We are debating over it. So, what is the harm of talking and consulting with the people when that is espoused in the very democracy and in the standing orders of this house. And the honorable leader of the opposition, earlier on when he spoke, spoke about standing order 51. There's almost been no, uh, you know, sometimes we we sit there in the house or here, whether we should be objecting or not, because it, it just continues to flood the house, to shove things through without proper consultation. And in this manner, in the same manner in which this law has been pushed without consultation, you at least go before the standing committee, go out to the house and talk about it. And understanding what a 51 can be at least limited to three months if it is supposed to be consequential to the debate. But no, this is the heart of the contention on this matter, Mr. Speaker. It is about respect. Most of the Tokyo landowners Right now, as the honorable members have said, we are not the Tokyo landowners when Ratutskuna had initiated the Tokyo Land Trust Board. They are landowners who are PhD qualified, master's degree, the whole academic achievement. They can think freely. They do not need to be told what is good for them. What we owe them is to consult them, speak. You have the numbers ultimately at the end, but speak to them. Why do you need to make this such authoritative and a dictatorial imposition using the law understanding order 51? This is my question. It is making an issue of a non-issue. You know, I've been schooled in the military in terms of uh, 
uh, negotiation. Okay, I'll be standing on the checkpoint, and then, you know, an armed element comes trying to take you know, a whole lock of AK-47 across to the other side. And my initial thing is to understand, as I've been schooled, if his problem is small, you keep it small. If it is big, you make it small. Here we make a problem of what is not supposed to be a problem. All because of what we are saying in NFP, because the arrogant attitude of the government, and because it does not respect the landowners. Irrespective of the material and the argument of what is good or bad about, about the deal. So I am saying, Honorable Speaker, you know, respectfully, and I join the accolades and, you know, the, the, um, the interventions of my of members of the um, uh, of the opposition, you know, who have spoken. Please consult. You know, <coughs> consult with the people. That is the argument here. Now, honourable speaker, I want to say, you know, in my case, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been dragged in on this video that I made. Now, I want to say that in that video, I did three things. One, I reinforced our position with regards to the bill and the attitude. Secondly, I called for calm by our people because I can hear. I hear them. I do not need to tell them. I hear them. Okay? And the response of the people who are good people and say, oh, thank you so much, you know? Because we are all looking at the interest of Fiji as a nation, not only the Toke. I mean, that's far from it. It's the reason why I'm with NFT. In defending the principles of this fight that it stood for. You know, this, these are the things that I'm trying to say. And the third part of that bill, I was raising a video that the Honorable Prime Minister presented the previous evening. And in that video, you know, he referred to the sheep herd mentality about the debate on this bill and the way that it is going. Okay, now, Honorable Kick, I take a lot of reservation at that. I don't have the brain of a sheep. I'm an intelligent it's okay that loves this country. Okay? I got shot for this country. So I have my own opinion of what I know. This is good for the people, at least the people that voted me in. So it deserves that respect. So that is a very, very bad thing to say in my view. Secondly, the Honorable Prime Minister in that video, he said that this is only a petty matter the issue. It is not honorable, Prime Minister. It is not petty. It is not petty. The issue of talking to people is not a petty issue. It is not a petty issue. Please talk Please to them. Sir. Now, honorable speaker, the, um, and on the third thing that he said, he said, you should all be happy about it. Why should I be happy? Because you tell me to be happy. On who's opinion who's telling the Honorable Prime Minister that I should be happy? Obviously not referring to Because you don't know what you're talking about. That's the problem. Oh, I doubt that very much anyway. But what I'm saying, Honorable Speaker, please do not talk at people. There is enough imposition already. There is enough imposition of this already. Please talk to people. Okay, Do not impose and tell us what you believe that is good for us. We respect your views, but please also, Honorable Prime Minister, respect the fact that we all do not quite share your opinion on this matter. <laughs> now, here, here, Honorable Speaker, here, here. at the end of this, at the end of this intervention, okay, I'll listen, Prime Minister, what are you saying? What you just said? Unfortunately for you, I am the Prime Minister. That's what you don't... I do not uh, wish to be the... You. Uh, through the speaker and only through the speaker. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Honorable, honorable Speaker, my apology. I absolutely have no intention to be the Prime Minister. Not in this current climate anyway. So where we are and where we've been brought to anyway. But because I have raised this issue today, Honorable Speaker, in this parliament I am calling on the Commissioner of Police. Why is the Prime Minister not being taken for inciting 
for calling the Honorable Attorney General Kaita. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. That's, That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> First thing, none of us in the opposition ever referred to the Attorney General that way you did. <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone made, if okay. anyone made an incitement about the indo fijian mind you, that is the proper term, Honorable Prime Minister, I think you should go and get screwed yourself with your constitution. There is no Kaindia here. A Kaindia, I'll tell you, like a Kaiwiti is here in the constitution, the Kaiwiti in the interpretation of the 2013 constitution is the Fijian people of Fiji, the in the Indo-Fijian, the Itaukei, and every other That's ethnic group. That. They don't have to tell me that. Jay. Well, I have to tell you because Jay. you are telling me. Not that. Don't you know the reference I used it in? Uh, well, that's, that's my interpretation. See, see, that's the difference. Yeah, you're listening to the wrong lawyer. It's about, you know, we are being charged because we interpret this thing by wrong. You know? You're listening to the wrong lawyer. But anyway, let me conclude here. Let me say this once and for all. I ask the Commissioner of Police, you must investigate the Prime Minister on the, in that video because, in my opinion, it is inciting. That's why I called for calm in my video. It's not count. And then, I, think. I want to say, Honorable Speaker, <coughs> I do not support this bill. Thank you. Yes, I respect there are many, many intelligent Indo Fijians in this state. We owe them a lot for how Fiji has come to where we are. Why are you talking about ethnicity now? Why are you talking about ethnicity now? Because the Prime Minister called the Attorney General Akaindia. Why? Oh, because before the people okay. took okay. That's your problem. But that is a matter of interpretation. You see, yeah. it is my fault. Exactly. You are obsequious. That is the point here. That's your problem. Well, your problem, you're reading this thing all wrong, and that's why you need to consult with the people. Everything goes for, for you, anything in politics. No, it's not honorable, Tony uh, General, it doesn't. Please respect at least what the people are saying and hear them out. And I'm imploring you and the honorable Prime Minister, please. We're right, you know, in a few hours, this bill is going to go through for voting. You know, yes, I've spoken strongly, and that's my role as a member of parliament to speak for the people who have put me into the house. It's a it's a thankless job, mind you. I've been I'm probably the most what can you say uh, uh, member of parliament that's gone through hell and came back in this term, and that's fine. I can stand with it. But I'm saying, let us allow us the opportunity to do our job. The people are saying, the people are of goodwill. They've aired their views, they don't care about this matter. Please listen to them. And I ask, please let's consult again on this bill. The Honorable Attorney General can bring it in under another standing law, the 50, that would allow a time that we talk about this before it's brought back into the House. It's a very simple matter in my view. I think the Honourable Speaker apologise. Uh, People are making things uh, worse. Uh, who's that? <laughs> I can't tell who's saying that. Who's saying that? Order, 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 order. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? Order, 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 order. I thank the Honourable Speaker and I thank you for this time. I do not support uh, Bill Number 17 of 2021. Thank you. Binaka. I thank the Honourable Member for his contribution to the debate. I now give the floor to the Honourable Adilitian Gionibara. You have the